While waiting for darkness to cover the magic island of Euclidia, Jerry and Joan have gone on a tour of the island, leaving Captain Bradford and Mrs. Gregory on the captive yacht. Mrs. Gregory's daughter, Joan, who has spent nearly all of her 15 years on the island, has undertaken to show Jerry the submarine locks on the fifth level below the surface of the artificial island. They descend to the proper level in the magnetic elevator, but the door fails to open. Jerry and Joan are now badly frightened as they hear the rushing of water outside the elevator shaft. They've been there for some time, and the air in the elevator car is getting very bad. I can hardly breathe. What are we going to do? Must be some way to get air into this thing. These Euclidians are too smart not to figure on accidents in these elevators. You're right, Jerry. There's an oxygen tank, small valve in the ceiling. I forgot. Just like a girl. Where is it? Feel around on the ceiling. Up there in the dark. Yeah. Uh, no, nope. can't reach it. Not tall enough. Then we're going to suffocate. Jerry, I can hardly breathe. Wait a minute. I'll stand in the corner. Oh, the corner here, it's round. Maybe I can brace myself. Yeah. Now, I'll make a cradle of my hands. Feel around me, can't you? Yes, Jerry, I will. There, I feel your face. Well, you can't stand on my face. Run your hands down my arms. Feel how I've got my hands fixed? Yes, Jerry. Then put your foot in my hands. Get your hands behind my head. Yes. Lift yourself up. Then take one hand loose. Feel around on the ceiling. If you grab a, a valve, turn it on. I will try. Oh, there now. Hold me, Jerry. Quit pulling my hair. I'll hold you. Oh. Hurry up. My chest hurts. I think I have it, Jerry. And turn it on. Oh, Jerry. I can feel it. The oxygen. Oh, it feels so good. It almost hurts. Then get down. You must be breathing it all in up there. Jump down. Yes, Jerry. Oh, oh. boy. That's good stuff. Whee. I'm going to carry a tank of that stuff with me after this. Whenever we go out sightseeing on this crazy island. I've never known anything just like this to happen. One of the submarine locks must have broken and let the ocean flood in. Plenty of pressure at six fathoms, too. Can they pump it out? Oh, yes. The chambers are all made so they may be flooded deliberately, then pumped out. What's that for? In case of escape, the local prism reflectors in the control chambers will locate the escapers. Then the switches are thrown to close the automatic doors around the section they're trying to escape through. And the water turned on. Golly, whiskers. These guys are plenty mean, aren't they? Yes, Jerry. No one can imagine the awful things on Euclidia. Well, when we get rescued... Captain Bradford and your mother will know how to use all these slick inventions to do a lot of good back in our world. Listen, the water has nearly stopped running around this elevator shaft. I can't hear anything but a buzzing in my ears. It feels kind of funny and dizzy. Oh, I forgot. The oxygen. We must turn it off again, Jerry. Too much is not good for us. Okay. Get up on my hands again. Yes, Jerry, I will. Hey! You stuck your finger in my oh, eye. I'm sorry. Yeah, so am I. I'll be glad when the lights come on in this thing. Now, up you go. Uh, can you reach it? Yes, I can feel it. And shut it off. Hmm, that is done. My head feels queer, too. Boy, you sure hit the floor hard. Hurt you? No, but I'm... Listen... Yeah, you can hear the pumps working. Sound like they're working mostly on air. The water must be all gone. Then we shall soon be out of here. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Here comes the light. Yes, we can see now. Oh, this is much nicer. I'll say it is. They sure built these elevators right anyway. 
Not a drop of water got in. Can we start this thing? Not yet. When you hear the permanent magnets release the car and the portative magnets take hold, then we may safely actuate the control button. Yeah, you're feeling better, all right. I can tell by the big words. When you were scared in the dark, you talked pretty near human. But now that everything's okay, you've got to spout large language. Now, Jerry, do not make fun of me. I was so... so... Hey, Joan, <laughs> Jiminy Crickets, Joan, cut that out. I cannot help it. I have never cried before. It, it feels so good. Oh. <laughs> well, if that ain't just like a girl, it feels so good to cry. I'll bet you have a swell time at funerals. <laughs> oh, turn off the water. Golly whiskers, here, here. Take my handkerchief and wipe your eyes. And for the love of Pete, quit falling. Thank you, Jerry. Yes, water outside the elevator, water inside the elevator. You women are all alike. You're mighty smart and brave till things get rough. Then we men have to step in and help you. You are wonderful, Jerry. I know it. There go the magnets, Jerry. I can hear them. We'll soon be able to start the car. Won't be any too soon for me. There now. The pumps have stopped. And the magnets have stopped clicking. Can we go now? Yes. The door should open automatically, just as it would have when the car reached this level if the water had not flooded the chamber outside. Well, if it ain't opening very fast, what can we do to hurry it? Nothing. If it does not open automatically, someone is keeping it closed. That can be done from the control chambers. Oh, what would they want to do that for? Some important experiment must have failed, and G-47 does not want anyone to see what happened. G-47's afraid to let anybody know he can make a mistake, huh? I think that is it. We of Euclidia are allowed to see only perfect things. The scientists would have us think they never make a mistake. Well, if we can't land here, let's go up to one of the other levels and look around there. Nothing's ever going to scare me after drowning like we did. Oh, we did not drown, oh, Jerry. We thought we were going to, same thing. I'm going to push this button for the first level. If anything else goes wrong, I want to be near the top. Here it goes. Oh, the car is actually ascending. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy. Now cut that out. Don't you go blubbering again. <laughs> There's the fourth level. We're up this far, anyhow. And we're going up smoothly now, Jerry. We will soon be out in the open air again. Not until we look around on this first level, we won't. Hey, that's funny. The car didn't stop at the third level like it did at the others. That means the third level is sealed off. Some secret work is going on there. Same thing on the second level. You sure don't get to see much when you go on a sightseeing tour of this island. Just be patient, Jerry. Before we leave the island, you will have seen nearly all of it. If we ever leave it. There goes the first level. Guess we don't see anything. Oh, I'm glad, Jerry. I want to get back to my mother's yacht and see Mother and the captain. I've been on this island nearly all my life, Jerry. I do not like it. Well, I guess you're right, Joan. This place hasn't been any fun for you. What's going on now? Now this car has picked up the top of the elevator shaft housing. We're raising it above the ceiling of the island with us. Well, if that door doesn't open automatically for us, when we get all the way up, I'm going to find some way to break out of this car. Now we're at the top. The door will open now. Well, it better... Hey, listen. What's that noise? Oh, that is rain, Jerry. It rains very hard here in Euclidia. Oh, it's a wonder old G-47 hasn't figured out a way to stop the rain. He's figured everything else. Now, Jerry, the door is opening. Yeah. Boy, and look at it rain. About as wet up here as it was down there. Well, come on, get ready to run for it. Run where? Oh, to the Gregory Yard, of course. Where do you think? Boy, that rain's wet. 
Do we have to shut the door? No, the door closes automatically. See, it is closing. Come on, Joan. Hang on to my hand. We're going to get plenty wet, so don't take time to show me anything. And don't stop running till we get to the house. with some spread. You're all right, Joan? Watch out now. The deck of this yacht is going to be slippery. I'm so wet, Jerry. Watch your step now. Now you run into your mother's cabin and get into some dry clothes. Yes. I'll go to the captain's cabin. Go on, scoot. I'll hurry, Jerry. Talk about rain. I'd better get inside myself. Sorry to bust in without knocking, Captain, but it's... Hey, Tex. Oh, nobody home, huh? Oh, I guess he's in the radio camera, Mrs. Gregory's. Yeah? Jerry, may I come in? Yeah, come in. Oh, Jerry. Why didn't you change your clothes like I told you to? Well, my, my mother is not in her cabin, Jerry, and I have no extra clothing of my own. Oh, well, then I guess I'll have to give you some of mine. Let's see, here's a good heavy sweater and a pair of pants. They'll keep you dry anyway. Oh, thank you, Jerry. I'll go to my mother's cabin hey, and put them... Wait a minute. Something funny here. Where, Jerry? On this boat, I mean. Even if Mr. Mrs. Gregory and Tex were in the radio room, they'd hear us running and yelling around here, and they'd be worried about why we were gone so long. I wonder where they are. Do you think something has happened to them? Gosh, I'm afraid so. Come on. We'll try to find them. Darkness has fallen on the magic island. Once more, the weird yellow glow of artificial daylight covers the scientific isle of Euclidea in the South Pacific Ocean. Joan Gregory and Jerry Hall returned hours ago to the captive Gregory yacht after a terrifying experience in one of the magnetic elevators, only to find Captain Tex Bradford and Mrs. Gregory are missing from the yacht. A note handed to Jerry by the skipper tells them that Mrs. Gregory and Tex are on a secret mission and to make no move until they return. All is silent on the island, while in the radio cabin of the yacht, Jerry and Joan listen to music from the radio and try to keep themselves cheered up as they wait anxiously for Mrs. Gregory and the captain. I wish they would hurry, Jerry. I'm so worried. Oh, cheer up, Joan. Tex can take care of your mother and himself, too. I know Captain Bradford's a wonderful man, Jerry, and Mother thinks he can accomplish anything. But none of you realize fully the dangers on this horrible island. Well, it won't help him any for us to run around yelling for him. Just sit still like this note said and listen to the music. Well, it's a good thing old G-47 didn't stop our incoming radio beam, anyway. I like this music, Jerry. It's coming from one of your Hollywood radio stations, is it not? Yeah, and those guys are real hillbillies, too. What does it mean, this hillbilly? Are they all men from the hills, all with the name William? Now, look, there's so many things you don't know that I don't know where to start teaching you. Do you like the music, or don't you? Oh, yes, Jerry. I enjoy it thoroughly. Well, then sit still and listen to it. Stop it, Jerry. Stop that music. Okay. There you are now. I'll hold it there and you go ahead and talk while I listen no, to it. No, stop it. Stop it, please, Jerry. Okay, okay. Hold everything. Oh, I'm sorry to be so much trouble to you, Jerry, but... I'm so nervous. And you also are nervous, Jerry. Oh, 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 nothing of the kind. I'm, well, I'm just as steady as a rock. Then why are you chewing that lead pencil up? Never mind me. You just sit still and quit worrying. It'll be along in a minute. I'd better leave this radio open on Johnson's wavelength, I guess. Jerry, do you know all about my mother and Captain Bradford? I mean about all the mysterious things they do all over the world and how they can have ships belonging to many countries helping them. So many things. Do you know about that, Jerry? No. And Mrs. Gregory made me promise I wouldn't ask her any more about it. But we'll find out someday. Hey, now where are you going? 
I was just going to look out over the island and see No, it. you're not. Get away from that door. Now, what did I tell you? Didn't it say in the note for us to act just as if your mother and the captain were here on the yacht with us? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jerry, but I get so worried. Well, so do I. But you'll get over there. Get over there and sit down. Go on, I said. Sit down. Why, Jerry, you're wonderful when you speak like that. So commanding and masterful. Oh, all us men are like that. We don't expect much from you women. And, of course, I'm 16 and you're only 15. Makes a lot of difference. Oh, I'm sure it does, Jerry. I wish they'd hurry, though. That yellow light is all over the island. And if they haven't got any of those strict glasses, they might get lost. I think they would not be allowed to have the glasses. But they should be able to find their way back to the glare of the yacht lights. Hey, quiet. Listen. Why, what is it? Shh, quiet, I said. Listen. Someone's coming along the deck. Sit still. We don't want to act too anxious. Oh, Mother. John, my dear. Boy, oh. am I glad to see you folks. Sorry to leave you kids like that, but we had to get something done quick. And Tex thought that if you didn't know anything about it, you wouldn't be subject to any danger over the idea. Oh, Jerry and I had a terrible experience in one of the magnetic elevators. Yeah, and Joan acted just like a girl, started right in to cry. Well, Jerry, you can't expect us women to be as brave as you men. No, I guess I shouldn't. Well, Tex, did you get some plan of escape figured out? I hope so. Pat and I took a long chance getting this thing. Is it cabin all tight? Jerry and I have inspected the opaque cloth covering since the rain. The cabin is quite safe, Captain. Good girl, Joan. Well, here's what we've got. What's that? Looks like a pocket fire extinguisher. That is one of the small oxygen tanks. These scientists have in clips in nearly every room on the island. I have never been allowed to touch one of those, Captain. Did G-47 give it to you? <laughs> Not exactly. Gee, you swiped it. I'm afraid we did, Jerry. I don't approve of taking anyone else's property, but this means our chance to escape from the island, possibly our lives. So we took it. But when the loss is discovered, G-47 will be very angry. That's why we've got to work fast. I knew they couldn't see me carrying this thing. I had it inside this coat of opaque cloth, but they'll soon discover it's gone. I'll help you, Tex. What do you want to do? Tell you in a minute, kid. First, I want to get Joan and Pat started on my celluloid diving suit. You three wait here while I go to my cabin and get it. I'll spring the lock on this door. Don't open for anyone but me. You look so excited, Mother. Has the captain a good plan? Yes, dear. Tex has a very fine plan. Not for our immediate escape, but for getting a message to Johnson so that he may arrange our rescue. I know what it is. He's going to use that celluloid diving suit with this little oxygen tank inside of it to get through the ring of gas in the fog. Yes, Jerry. The captain is going to try to swim out through that fog ring tonight. And he's going to put one of those homing pigeons inside the suit with him. Then he'll release it when he's safely outside the ring. That is wonderful, Mother. And it may work if there's nothing metallic on the captain's clothing. Yeah, say, that oxygen tank might set off the alarm. That's taken care of. While you and Joan were gone, I helped the captain cement a lining of the opaque cloth into his celluloid diving suit and his swimming suit. The magnetism won't affect anything inside that cloth. I think, Mother, that... You and Captain Bedford are almost as clever as G-47 and his scientists. What do you mean, almost? Tex has got those Euclidians beat. Okay, Jerry. I'll let him in. Now, we'll have to work fast. I put my swimming suit under this robe, so it won't take long to get ready. Good. Jerry, go up in front and get the other pigeon. Hide him under your coat as you did before and take your time. Okay, Tex. I'll be careful not to be seen. Now, Pat, if you and Joan will help me get into this thing. What a peculiar garment, Captain. It's airtight and opaque. That's all we need. J-12C to J-24Y. Johnson to Bradford. Message for you. Quiet for this. I've had no word for you for hours. Transmission conditions perfect here in Los Angeles. Cannot understand why storm north of you should prevent reception by stations east of you. Latest report picked up from oil tanker at 24 degrees south. Says electrical disturbances south of them. Can you hear me, J24Y? If no answer, we'll repeat every quarter hour. That is all. Johnson. 
And then there's no hope for the pigeon to reach him. He's gone back to Los Angeles. Don't worry, Joan. That was all in code. Johnson is really standing by at latitude 24 south right now. Yes, dear. And when he said he'd received a message from an oil tanker, it meant he had contacted an oil tanker and was refueled. So now he's ready for anything necessary to help us. You have some clever and loyal friends, Mother. Will you tell me someday yes, just Joan. how... Someday I'll tell you all about Tex and myself and how we're able to do so many things. But now... It's me. I'll let him in. got him all right, and nobody saw me. Good boy. Now I'll tie this message to his leg, and you can help Pat and Joan cement me up in this thing, with the oxygen tank and the pigeon inside, on my back. Then when I get well beyond the fog and gas rings, I'll rip the celluloid shirt off and turn the pigeon loose. But how are you going to get back through the gas ring? You're going to ruin that suit taking the pigeon out of it. That worries me, Jerry. Tex thinks he can hold his breath long enough to swim through the gas ring coming back. But I'm... I'm afraid... Oh, Tex, if anything should happen to you... I... Oh, forget it, Pat. I'll make it. Now, the pigeon is ready. Open the tank so it barely releases the oxygen, Jerry. Joan, you help Pat cement this thing around my waist. Then you can slip the tank and the pigeon down my back and cement the helmet on. That's about as little as I can let out of the tank and be sure it'll be continuous, Tex. Thanks, Jerry. Now, stick the tank down my back so it lays flat along the bulge where this thing is cemented to my swimming belt. Coming up. Save. That's just going to fit in there. Here's the pigeon, Tex. You're sure it won't get crushed? No, no, there's plenty space inside this stiff celluloid thing to give the pigeon room. Now, let him down in there easy now. Well, little bird isn't a bit frightened, is it, Mother? We've always been kind to it. It trusts us to continue being kind. Here's your helmet, Tex. Just a second. Now, last minute instructions. I can't talk when that is on. Now, when you cement it all around my shoulders, you, Jerry, walk out on deck with me. Walk between me and the island. I'll have this robe of the island cloth over my head and shoulders. We'll both go to the engineer's quarters. You'll have to stay there till I get back. But, Tex, how will we know if you get... If I get into the water and start swimming out without being seen, it's all over with the shouting. So I'll have Jerry get the engineer to make eight bells for you as soon as I disappear in the water. Okay, put it on. Let's hold this edge here, Jerry. And you hold that down, Joan. Now hold it tight. Yes, Mother. Very tight and smooth while I put this cement around it. There, now hurry now. The cement will dry as you walk the deck, and I'm afraid something will happen any minute. Goodbye, dear, and good luck. Bye, dear. All clear, Mrs. Gregory. Throw that robe over his head. All right, wait a minute. There. I'll take his arm. Now, we're all set. See you later. Oh, Mother... It's so wonderful of the captain to think of that. Yes, dear. And it's so brave of him to attempt it. Oh, I hope we've fixed everything all right. It seemed all right. And the oxygen tank will last a long time at the rate it was discharging. I wonder how long it will take him. He said the engineer would make eight bells for us when he's safely in the water. It's only a few seconds until eight o'clock now, Mother. So no one will notice anything out of the ordinary in the bells. Yes, Tex figured on that or he wouldn't have used it for a signal. Isn't it... About time now, Mother? It shouldn't be long. The engineer was expecting him. Had the hatch open. He could get into the water noiselessly from there. And if the pigeon gets away successfully, will it be sure of reaching Johnson's boat? Easily, Joan. According to the position Johnson gave, he's only five degrees north of us, or about uh, 345 miles. Mother, the signal... Yes, dear. Tex is gone. He's out in the water, swimming through that gas. 